Okay, let's start building. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do, let's give our project a name. I'm gonna call it uh, Developer Data Connector. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, identify the authentication method that we're going to use. Um, there's a couple of different ones. I mean, most notably would be the OAuth2 authentication if you were trying to access data um, from an API that requires OAuth2. Um, that is totally possible. For this case, we're just gonna handle the keys and whatnot uh, in the code. What I'll do is I will create a new script. I'll just call it auth. And here I'm gonna put in my function um, and an is admin user uh, to determine um, whether or not it's an admin user. Uh, and that just is literally just returning a Boolean that says false. Easy peasy. Um, so that's gonna be in the auth. So we don't have to clutter up our code with uh, that simple little function. Next up, we wanna bring in our configuration. All we're defining is just one configuration piece um, that's gonna set a, a single user ID for Stack Overflow. Um, now here I have a, a placeholder coming from a default user variable, uh, which is actually coming from properties. I have created an app with uh, Stack Overflow already, uh, where really all you have to do is just register the application and give it a little bit of data and it'll give you an API key that you can use to make requests against the API. Um, I'm not gonna demo how to do that, it's very straightforward. Um, but here we're gonna allow some configuration for the user ID. Now this is my user ID. Um, you would obviously want to uh, replace that with your own. Next up, we're gonna define the schema. Now I have pasted that in, and that consists of a get fields function, which is being called in the get schema function. Now this is what gets called by uh, the connector itself. We're gonna then actually build out those fields. Um, and here I have a console logging to the stack driver. Uh, and then it's gonna return that schema to the connector. Next up, we get the data. Now this is another function used by the connector, uh, which is gonna process a few requests, which gets sent off, data gets manipulated compared to the schema. We're gonna actually validate the configuration and then it's actually going to return all of the rows of data. Now this example, we've just got one row because it's all gonna just be my own developer data that's gonna kind of display on a dashboard. Um, but really the key elements of this are our validate config, where we're gonna pass in the config params, make sure that, there is, that they exist. Then we're going to get the fields, look at the requested fields, and then we're gonna fetch the data from the API and then format the data with those requested fields. Easy peasy, let's bring in those functions. Uh, validate config. This is, uh, I think, verbatim from the, well, just about verbatim from the example on the docs. Um, I didn't change it much, but we will go back and uh, refactor that a little bit. Then we're gonna actually fetch the data from the API, and that is super simple. We're just going out to this URL endpoint, and it's going to return uh, the developer data that we're looking for, the things, and if we look at the fields, we're getting display name, link, profile image, gold, silver, bronze badges, and then reputation. And again, some of that I don't need, but in this kind of first example, let's just get something that works, and then let's refactor it. So I'm gonna copy the very last function we're gonna need here for this example is gonna be format data. Now all this does is it takes the response from the API, it's gonna shift off the very first thing, it's gonna return it in an, ar in an array and we don't need the array so we'll just shift that off and then get the requested fields, check it against them, match it up and return those values to the get data. And if all goes well, we're returning that. If something has gone wrong, it's gonna actually return this error. 
So let's save that. And before we can test it out, I need to actually view the manifest file. And let me remove that and I'm gonna copy in. Okay, now that I have that copied in, we can actually deploy this manifest and then check it in the data studio. Now the deployments, uh, in simplest terms, you're gonna automatically have a head deployment, which is the current version of your code. Um, and you can actually get the ID there, take that, whoops, take that over to Data Studio and install this as a data source with the deployment ID, validate that, and you actually get, so these are, this is data filled out in your uh, manifest file. Go ahead and hit select. We're authorizing. All it's going to do is check that you um, are authorizing with your Google account. And we're going to connect to an external service with that URL fetch. Here we could change the user ID since I have it set up to be uh, defaulted to my own. I'm just going to leave that. And here we go, those fields uh, that we are using from our schema. Perfect. Now, before we build this data studio, let's just explore. We don't need to build yet because I'm going to make a lot of changes. And if all goes well, we should see some data. And you've got your Stack Overflow info. Now you can actually add things to this. Um, I don't want it to be a metric. I want to actually add it to the, um, let's see my bronze badges, let's add this to the table. All right, easy, returning a lot of data. Now some of this I don't need. In the next video, we're gonna refactor a bunch of things and actually grab a lot more data. Okay, so stay tuned and uh, join me for the next one.